Hey everybody, this video is on the uses of parallel versus radial magnetic fields in DC motors. When constructing a simple DC motor, there are two variants of magnets or magnetic fields that you will come across. The first type is through using a pair of parallel magnets. Parallel magnets will produce magnetic field lines that are parallel, and in this case they are running horizontally from the north pole of one magnet to the south pole of another. Since the direction of the magnetic field remains the same, the direction of force due to the motor effect will also remain the same throughout the rotation of the armature. For example, on side A of the armature, when looking from the front of the motor, the force vector will always go downwards, and the force vector on side B on the other side of the armature will also always remain upwards. And as a result of these two force vectors, that will allow for a constant torque and continuous rotation. However, even though the direction of the torque and rotation remains the same, the magnitude of torque actually changes with rotation. And this is because torque is given by n i a b sine theta, where the angle theta is the angle between the force that's producing the torque and the plane of the armature or the lever arm of the rotation. Initially, when the plane of the armature is horizontal, this angle here is 90 degrees. And as the armature starts to rotate, this angle here quickly changes and increases from 90 degrees. So as this angle theta here changes, the torque also changes. This can be better represented on the graph. The torque is the highest at the beginning when the armature's plane is horizontal. So this is when the angle is 90 degrees. And it decreases until the armature reaches this vertical orientation, whereby there will be no current flowing through the armature. So the torque is zero at this given instance. After this vertical orientation, the torque will start to increase again until it reaches a maximum value again when the armature returns to its horizontal orientation. This fluctuation in torque magnitude will repeat itself throughout the rotational motion of the armature. So in summary, by using a pair of parallel magnets, the torque acting on the armature will fluctuate in magnitude throughout its rotation. In contrast to parallel magnets, when we are using a pair of radial magnets, this limitation of fluctuating torque is overcome. The reason why the magnetic field is described as radial is because the lines are no longer straight and parallel they converge in the middle and diverge on the side of the field. The direction of the field lines run in such a way so that the force vectors due to the motor effect do not remain in the same direction any longer. In fact, they change such that the angle between the force vectors on side A and B of the armature will remain always perpendicular to the plane of the armature as you can see here. Now remember, Torque is at its maximum when the angle between the force vector and the lever arm or the armature's plane is perpendicular. So if we can achieve this using a pair of radial magnets, we can allow the magnitude of torque to always remain at its maximum value throughout the rotation of the armature. This is an advantage of using radial magnets over parallel magnets. For parallel magnets, the torque fluctuates between a maximum value and zero, whereas for radial magnets, it remains the maximum value throughout the rotation. However, when the armature is in its vertical orientation, recall that the split ring commutators will momentarily lose contact with the neighboring brushes. And as a result, there will be no current flowing through the coils of the armature. And because torque relies on the size of the current, if there is no current present, the torque will be zero when the armature is vertically oriented. That's why on the torque versus time graph, although the torque remains horizontal and constant throughout the rotation, it is actually zero represented by the blank circles at times when the armature is vertical. The rotational motion will continue due to the momentum of its rotational motion prior to reaching this vertical orientation. Now, despite the fact that the magnitude of torque behaves very differently when using parallel versus radial magnets, 
it's important to understand that the force due to the motor effect will remain the same magnitude in the two different types of magnetic fields. And this is because the magnitude of force acting on the armature is given by the equation MBIL sine theta. The angle theta here is the angle between the wire, so side AB and side CD, and the direction of the magnetic field. If you're looking from above the motor, regardless of whether you're using a radial magnetic field or parallel magnetic field, the field lines will always intersect the two sides AB and CD of the armature at right angles. In other words, if you look from above a radial or parallel magnetic field, the field lines will always look like this. This is the reason why on the graph of force versus time for both parallel and radial magnetic fields, the magnitude of the force will remain the same. It fluctuates between positive and negative due to the different directions of force acting on each side of the coil. And this is of course achieved by the reverse of current every half a revolution by the slit ring commutators. This concludes the video on the use of parallel magnets and radial magnets in DC motors.